Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Now, for the past couple of weeks, I have been covering the entire used sailboat market all the way from $20,000 up to 200 and some change. And today, I wanna talk with you about boats that I would personally buy so that you can understand my criteria for buying a sailboat for myself as well as what my sailing plans and goals are. Now, anytime you buy yourself a new to you, fancy dancy used yacht, it should be specifically for you. What other people think and say about your vessel does not matter at all. Always buy yourself the vessel that is going to fit your needs, your sailing goals, and your future sailing plans. So today, let's bang out some boats that I would actually buy. And I, again, am going to cover a wide range of prices. So let's get right to it. So first up, a boat that I would buy if I was in the budget category, the more budget-friendly version, would be the Genoet 36i. Now everybody knows that I would prefer a dual helm, but finances don't always align with my dreams, and life happens. So there it is. So first up, it would be the Genoet 36i. Now this comes in a two-cabin as well as a three-cabin version. I would only ever consider the vessel if it was a two-cabin version. As you can see, incredibly nice large cockpit, even with only the single helm. There is plenty of room on this vessel for a solo sailor or a couple, and the vessel is also CEA rated. What that means is it's capable of withstanding the typical conditions you're going to encounter when crossing oceans. Pretty simple, correct? And with the two cabin, not the three cabin, if you go with the two cabin, you actually get a much larger head here with a separate stand-up shower. This becomes storage and you have a giant walkthrough directly through your shower right to the storage. Now that one's a three cabin, so let's see if we can find a two cabin here. I believe this one is a two cabin, but let's see. There we go, a little picture. So here's the three cabin down below, two cabin up above. As you can see, you launch that extra bed. This becomes giant storage, huge separate stand-up shower with large access right to your storage area. Let's see how this guy did on his photos. That's the storage area. This picture doesn't do it justice. It's actually huge. And here's your separate stand-up shower. This door right here is how you access this storage area. And it's also accessible from up top in the cockpit there. Now, if we move right along and we're gonna bang out some specs here. So here is the 36i. Length of the waterline of 32.28 feet. This is very important and keep this in mind because we're going to be comparing it to several vessels, vessels later. Length overall of 35.89 feet and a nice beam of 11.78 feet. For me personally, I'm always going for at least a beam of right around 12 feet. Not doing 10 foot beams, I'm not doing 11 foot beams. Always gotta be 12 feet. As far as the maximum draft, 6.36. But again, as usual, this vessel has several different options and keels and you can get that down to about 5.3. First built in 2009. Comes with a 34 gallon diesel tank and a 94 gallon water tank. Now, some things to keep in mind right here. When this boat first came out, she was $236,000. Right now on the used sailboat market, they are still a bit high for the current market. But generally speaking, you can pick these up down here in the Caribbean for right around 60. Here's one Martinique for 70. But normally speaking, like I said, right around 60. And as far as the vessel's speed, she will cruise right along at seven point knots if you are going or 7.9 knots now if you're going for a vessel and thinking about crossing oceans things like that you want to keep your minimum cruising speed right around seven knots so this one again does the trick with an easy seven knot cruise so that ladies and gentlemen is the first vessel i would personally buy if that's what i was going for and i was a bit more in the budget category so why would I buy that vessel? Well, I currently live down here in the Caribbean and my next five years will be spent sailing the Southern Caribbean. After that, I may do another Atlantic crossing and go cruise the Mediterranean. For me, that vessel checks all of the boxes, very nice swim platform, large cockpit, easily accessible storage, separate stand-up shower, and is capable of doing that Atlantic crossing if I choose to do another one a bit down the road, as well as meeting all of my requirements for here in the Caribbean. 
So if you have similar goals, then maybe the 36i might work for you as well. So next on my list of single helm vessels in the somewhat budget category, this one kind of breaks some rules here, but it's the Beneteau Oceanus 37. I absolutely love this vessel and everybody should know by now that Beneteau is absolutely my favorite manufacturer. Now you can instantly notice some differences here. With a two cabin, things change a bit. This berth runs width versus long compared to the 36i. We have our shower. This isn't really a separate stand-up shower. It's kind of a wet head and that kind of sucks, but it does have a larger cockpit than the 36i. Again, a fantastic vessel capable of meeting all of my cruising needs. Its cruising speed is going to be very, very similar to the 36i, so she's going to meet that seven knot requirement for longer distances and the occasional ocean crossing. The real bummer is the price. This one comes in right around 90. The least expensive I've seen these is occasionally they'll pop up for about 79. And if we look at the specs on the vessel, here we are at the specs. She has a length of the waterline of 34.08 feet and a length overall of 37.67. Now let's compare that to the 36i. 3228 at the waterline, 3589 overall. So very, very similar. Now, is that difference, in your opinion, worth an extra 20 grand? That's 100% up to you. This also has a larger beam of 12.83 feet compared to the 11.78 feet. But the real test is when you get on the vessels. You need to go and look at them both and compare them both and determine for yourself if that price difference is really worth the extra cash. Now the 37 was first built in 2006, coming in with a 34 gallon fuel tank and a 95 gallon water tank. But again, the real bummer here is the price. If this was to come down to the same price as the 36i or even close, I would snag the 37 over the 36i. However, as it stands right now, simply based on finances, I would have to choose the 36i. But those are my two single helm vessels that I would be looking at if I was a person on right around that budget range. Now, there are some hunters that are single helms that come in a bit less or similar. But when we're talking price wise, I'm always going to snag the 36i over a comparable hunter if the prices are the same. Something to consider if it was a hunter for 20k less, but you got the similar specs as the Genoa 36i. But we're not talking about that today. We're talking about boats I'd actually buy. So the 36i and the Oceanus 37 are my two single helm picks that I would personally buy. And I explained to you exactly why. All right. Now the next one is going to make some people lose their absolute mind. But you got to hear me out here before you start calling me a potato. Just bear with me for a minute until I explain. The Gemini Catamarans. <laughs> yes, I am not a catamaran guy and everyone knows that, but hear me out. Just hear me out here. If we're looking at price and we're a budget-minded sailor, the Gemini Catamaran may be something to consider only for a couple of reasons. Now, this is not an ocean crossing vessel, but this vessel may be perfect for you if you're looking to sail the Caribbean. Now by the Caribbean, I mean here. So Puerto Rico, USVI, BVI, down the Caribbean chain, Trinidad, Tobago, and possibly over to Aruba. And that's it. That would be where this vessel may be great for you if you're a solo sailor or a couple. Now when it comes to livable space on board, very, very comparable, and you'll probably get a little more livable space with the Genoa 36i or the Oceanus 37. However, if your plan was to only be sailing the Caribbean in those areas that I just pointed out, this may be a great option as in the Caribbean, it's always incredibly warm. You're going to be spending a lot of your time outside on the deck doing outdoor activities. So possibly, this might work for that. Now, I would consider this vessel if that's what I decided I was going to be doing for my sailing future. If I did not plan on crossing oceans and my goal was strictly 
hang out down here in the Caribbean, live my best life, drinking some pina coladas, Mai Tais, and checking out different white sandy beaches, then yes, the Gemini 105 may be a vessel. And the reason for that is simply the features you get in the type of sailing. With all of that exterior space, access into and out of the water, you do have a nice master cabin on the 105 MC, a decent sized galley, not a huge salon area, but again, because you're down here in the Caribbean, you're not gonna be spending a lot of time inside the salon. Now these things don't sail amazing. As a matter of fact, they kind of sail like trash, but that's what makes it good for just down here in the Caribbean, because these are just short little island hops as you're working your way down south. So for me, maybe the 105 MC, if my goal again is just down here in the Caribbean. 31.75 length at the waterline, 35.5 overall. And the only thing that makes this a consideration is because you can slide right in normal slips with a beam of 14 feet. Now she was first built in 2003, last built 2011. 36 gallon fuel tank, 60 gallon water tank. And again, the only reason I'd be picking up one of these would be just to sail the Caribbean. And if that's what you wanna do, that's awesome. We have millions of square miles down here to sail. And you can pick this up for about the same price as the 36i. So it's really something to consider if those are your sailing goals. I mean, look at this. You could just be lounging out there. But again, the thing sails like trash. It's not some beast sailboat cruiser. What it is, is basically a floating outdoor playpen. You have tons of space on deck about as much as yourself or a couple would need down below plenty of storage if there is just two of you and the price is right but you need to be very very specific if this is the way you're starting to lean because you do need to get one that's in good shape and is not absolute trash now here is one we're getting up in price but i'm just trying to show you some nicer models or ones that are in better condition and this one appears to be in pretty good condition but they took trash photos so welcome to the world of brokers here's a fairly new one in massachusetts remember they were last built in 2011 this guy's got solar blah blah blah, blah. you guys know the whole drill so maybe maybe something like this will work for you if the caribbean is your jam so me if i decide one day that i only want to sail in the caribbean maybe i'll start to consider one of these just based off of price i know they sail like trash not going to be crossing oceans but hey i can have a really really good time right down here in the caribbean without ever leaving so let me know in the comments below if you think i'm an absolute potato for the gemini 105 mc and if you do i completely understand up next on my list again if you notice all these prices were all fairly similar the beneteau cycleads 39 now, unfortunately, this only comes really in a three cabin version. That is kind of the pitfall, in my opinion. Um, but it is the dual helm. So you can pick up the dual helm for right around the same price. You can grab the 36i single helm. So you would get a bit larger cockpit. However, you do change the layout. Like I said, it's really only a three cabin. So you would need to change some things up. Turn, I mean, if it was me, again, I'm talking about myself buying. I would turn one of these cabins into storage. Unfortunately, we only have a wet head here as well. So the real benefit is that dual helm. You get a lot larger cockpit. And if we pop on over and look at specs, we do gain a little bit of room. She is 35 length at the waterline. 39.27 length overall always remember that we're trying to stay under 40 foot length overall to keep our running costs lower now we do pick up quite a bit in the beam we have a 12.96 beam here so again we've met all of our criteria and with a draft 6.23 but that's the maximum draft you can also pick it up in the shoal draft First built 2007, 40 horsepower diesel coming with 58 gallon fuel tank and a 87 gallon water tank. Now this one, again, it's a CEA rated vessel, so you can absolutely do the Atlantic crossing, cruise the med, things like that, and an absolutely enormous cockpit. 
With every vessel you're ever considering, there's always going to be pros and cons. Is this guy's name Billy Graham Yachts? Isn't that like a uh, religious guy? Uh, February 20th, thorough interior and exterior cleaning. New anti -fouling. So brokers never tell you anything. Everybody knows that. But that would be my next one on the list. The Cyclades, it's technically a 39.3. Occasionally, you can pick these up on the market. I've seen them for as low as 70 grand. Currently, people are trying to do this last little before Christmas push into spring type of a thing. Uh, it looks like this guy's uh, built a house on the back of his boat. What in the French toast we got going? Is that a shower curtain? You got a shower curtain on your table, my dude? Uh, whoa, you gave me all three photos, too. Thanks, man. Yacht Studios, you've outdone yourself. So there's only, what's that? There's only three currently on the market, but coming in, you could really pick them up in the States for right around 75 right now. Um, this one is sale pending, but this was, uh, this was listed for 79 at one point in time. See, huge cockpit there. It all just depends on what's important to you and what is important to you should be based on where you're sailing. You'll see people pick up these vessels because they're blue water, quote unquote, blue water boats. And when I'm at sea, it handles better. Uh, no, they don't. And uh, you're rarely at sea. Most of your time sailing is always going to be spent at anchor on a mooring ball, island hops, coastal cruising. Very little of your time is actually spent out on the open blue. So always keep that in mind. Up next on my list, the Genoa Sun Odyssey 39i. Now this is the big sister to the 36i. And I actually just helped a consulting member purchase this one in Greece. He happens to live over there. So for the, for him, it made sense. Absolutely love the 39i. And this is a scenario where I prefer the Genoa over the Beneteau. I really like this swim step here. It's not really a swim platform. Walk through transom, swim step. I love it though. And if you've never been on one, try it out, see what you think. Absolutely huge cockpit with the dual helms here. Love the 39i. Again, CEA rated, cross oceans, coastal cruise, island hop, all of those phenomenal, amazing things that we love to do. Comes in a couple of different layouts. This one happens to be the three cabin, but she also comes in a two cabin. And my member that picked this one up got an absolute steal at only 77 grand. And she passed her survey with flying colors. So we'd pop on over to the specs. As you can see, three cabin, two cabin. For me personally, again, I'd go with the two cabin. Very, very similar to the 36i, just bigger. Separate stand-up shower, giant storage here, access into your storage right there. A huge length of the waterline of 35.15 feet. Length overall of 38.91 feet and a huge beam of 12.73 feet. Coming in with a 34 gallon fuel tank and a 94 gallon water tank. This one, my member was lucky, it was only listed at 77. We got a smoking deal on that one. This one's been for sale what feels like an eternity. So my guess is something is wrong with this one. Uh, I have not taken the time to call them, but there seems to be something fishy happening because it shouldn't be sitting on the market for that long at that price. That's a good price for the location. 89K up there in New York. That's a really, really good price. But uh, it would appear something's wrong here because... She's not selling. And uh, boats in this market that are priced correctly will sell in a day or two. But normally speaking, you can grab these for right around 80 grand in the United States of America. Not many available currently, because again, we're going in on a shortage of vessels these days. An overpriced one in Seattle, Washington, because why? Because everything in the Pacific Northwest is wildly overpriced. So only one page of them, but do keep in mind, you can pick these up for right around 80 grand under normal circumstances. So those ladies and gentlemen, those are my budget vessels I'm personally going to buy if my budget was $100,000 or less. Those are the vessels I would be looking at and my favorite out of all of them. I'm really in a toss up here. So you let me know which one of these is your favorite. Uh, let me know down in the comments, which one do you like the best?
If you need help getting on the water sooner than later in the most cost-effective and time-efficient manner without getting burned, head on over to my website at chasinglatitudes.com, sign up for a consulting package, and let's get you on the water. Now, I do want to give a quick shout out to all of my patrons. All my videos are made possible 100% through my patrons. To sign up for my patron, it's only $10 a month, and you do get full access to my private members area with several hundred members all looking to get on the water sooner than later. So hopefully, I will see you on my patron and members area soon. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit like, make sure to leave a comment down below, and turn on those notifications. Thank you so much.